Hello guys, my name is Alderbok there and we are back with another comeback guide video. In this video, we are once again going to tackle one of the more famous dinosaurs, the Allosaurus. The changes to the Allosaurus compared to the last time I covered him aren't that big, so this video will be a bit different. The topics are as following. We are going to go over the arsenal for the Allosaurus, its terrain compatibility and fighting style, then we are going to analyze the different fights you can find yourself in. By the way, I got a message regarding choosing and voting for creature for future combat guide videos, so if you have a specific creature you want me to cover, then you'll probably want to hear that. Like I said, the arsenal haven't really changed that much since the last time I covered him. I mean, we still got the basic bitch bite. And the other option, hatchet bite. Saving senses for last on front limb, we got the clap. And hide got the same basic stuff. Resilient scales, tough scouts, and light wheeled scales. No change for leg abilities either, first one not just traction, strong legs and long distance runner. Tail abilities are also the same, balance and attack tails. In terms of arsenal, the only major difference since last time are the new sense ability. Fresh blood, giving you the ability to know which women you should stay clear of. Though the range are only 50 meters and the extra damage support ain't gonna save you if you piss them off. When it comes to terrain compatibility and fighting style, nothing major has changed. Some creature you want to fight while doing a contest of turn radius, and others you just want to do hits and run. As for terrain, like I said in previous videos, open areas are best suited for adults. While I do view the Allosaurus to be a mid-tier, in terms of overall size, it's not that much smaller than an actual Apex. And if you know anything about playing as the big guys, well, then turning around on a dime in tight areas are really much of a hassle. As far as subspecies go, it boils down to what you're planning to fight. If you're planning to fight everything from low tier to a high tier, then by all means, go for the balanced one. This is mostly the case if you plan to play solo. The lack of speed on defense subspecies does leave you open to receive more attacks from your enemies. However, it does work wonder against lower tiers, and in group play, you can take the role on heavy damage dealers. The speed build does make you a bit more vulnerable against low tiers. However, against high tiers, hits and run will be more viable, and if you equip this arsenal, then you can be one heck of a bleeder. However, I will say that this build really sucks if you play solo. I said it in the previous video of Allosaurus, you have two bleed attacks, but equipping both are kinda unnecessary. You may be able to get away with it against low tiers, but against creatures of similar stats, then you will fall short in head-to-head -head battle. You don't need the tail attack for larger creatures, they don't do much. Rather, you should invest in turning speed. Unless there's a major stat difference between you, most players will resort to try and tail right. This is where better turning speed comes into play. The Allosaurus's default turning speed aren't really anything to brag about. If you haven't invested anything into turning speed, most players will utilize precise movement. While it does work for some, precise movement have a set speed and it is not as effective in an open field. Meaning that if your enemy finds the sweet spot right behind you, then you will find yourself in a predicament. It is also good to have long distance runners equipped. Most creatures, when out of stamina, become sitting ducks. Moving around rapidly requires stamina, and without mobility to outflank and or dodge incoming attacks, you'll quickly get outmaneuvered. Against lower tiers, you can sacrifice the balance tail to tail attack. Chances are they are going to have better mobility than you no matter what. It is also good to have resilient scales equipped. Most of the lower tiers utilize status effects like bleed or venom. As you are one of the higher class of mid tiers, you can afford to sacrifice a bit of defense for resilience against status effect. Again, Lower tiers usually have better mobility than you, so it's better to take a defensive stance and let them run into your attacks. If there's a stupid amount of pouncers after you, then run to a river and take a defensive stance there, but if it's a manageable number, then you can afford to allow them to get a hit in. You see, running after them are usually a waste of time and stamina. Why are you running? There's actually two reasons for you to allow them to pounce on you. One is, of course, while you just stand there waiting for them to waste their stamina. The other is, no, if you can, you should check if you can hit them or not, to a counter attack. Sometimes the pouncer will jump too close to your mouth or your claws, 
This way, you can waste their stamina while also getting damaged him. Once again, I insist that open areas are best suited for Allosaurus. It takes so little for the Allosaurus to get stuck, meaning that if your target chooses to run into a denser area, then it's just better to let them go, it's a waste of time and effort. However, if you still have visibility, then you can actually turn it against them. Too many hindrances can limit their movement. This also comes back to why it's good to have the tail attack equipped. Those who chooses to play the lower ranks aren't stupid, usually. They know that jumping in front of your main attacks will just kill them. That's why most of them will try and tail ride. Tail attack may not have much effect on similar size or larger creatures, but the smaller ones usually is what keeps them off your butt. Against larger creature though, you'll be the one forced to do hit and run. It is good to start a fight by getting that bleed in. That shit was embarrassing. When fighting against apexes, tail riding is a must. However, there are ways you can make it easier for yourself. For example, in this scenario, I am not using the balanced tail. While the allosaurus are faster than the apexes, without the extra boost in mobility, it's easier to follow your movement. It is also more challenging to get into the perfect tail riding position. Because of the lack of mobility, you are forced to move way more, wasting more stamina than necessary. Like I said earlier, the tail attack aren't going to do much against larger creature, so it's best to just trade it in for an actual helpful ability. With the boost mobility, you should be able to perform hits and run more effectively. Combine that with bleeding your enemy over a long period of time, and you'll eventually be able to bring the Apex down. However, there is something you need to be really careful with. Apexes in these situations takes a defensive stance and wastes very little stamina. Meaning when you're low and you try to recover, then of course they're not gonna let you. Now regarding what I said about voting and choosing creatures. First of all, if you wonder how to do it in the first place, then go to my community post, find the most recent post regarding the matter, and all the information should say there. For the next few combat guy videos, I am probably going to prioritize those creatures I have yet to give a combat guy video on. You see, the Allosaurus this time didn't really have much new to offer. Abilities new and old aside. The overall strategies compared to the last time I covered the Allosaurus are pretty much the same. So until these popular guys have gotten anything new to offer, I am going to prioritize the lesser known and popular dinosaurs. With that said, I thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys later. Goodbye!